Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a Muslim life coach and I support Muslim women with a relationship and mental health issues. But over here on YouTube, I make Islamic dawah content as well as lifestyle content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely hit that subscribe button down below. <sighs> Guys, I know 2020 has been a challenge. I just, I've overworked myself and I needed a break to take care of me before I can come and give part of myself to the world. And I've had a lovely break. Thank you so much to all of you who've asked you know, who've emailed me, who've messaged me on Instagram. I saw all of your messages. Thank you so much. May Allah reward you. May Allah add it to your scale of good deeds. I am fine. I am doing well. Alhamdulillah. Allah is always there for me. Cannot complain. Alhamdulillah. Okay, today's video is going to be about the habits that Muslims do in the masjid. The, the, the bad habits, okay? So, you know, I assume most of us have been to the masjid a couple of times at least. I'm someone that loves going to the masjid. I feel like if I don't go to the masjid for a while, I feel some kind of a way. So it's definitely a place that I like to spend a lot of my time in. And it's definitely a blessed place because as we all know, in a place where a group of people gather to remember Allah, the angels also descend. So that place is a very special and blessed environment to be in. However, being that the masjid is filled with us imperfect human beings, naturally some things come across that made you kind of side-eye certain things, you know? All of these things are first and foremost advice to myself before it is to anyone. So please don't feel like, uh, you know, I'm attacking a particular kind of person because some of these mistakes I probably have done without even knowing. The first bad habit that some of us show, and this particular one is for the brothers, is entering into the sister sections without any warning. Brothers, please stop doing this. It is extremely annoying. I find it extremely disrespectful. Like I feel disrespected as a sister if you just walk into our section without any warning. The Prophet peace be upon him said, beware of entering upon the women folk or gatherings or areas where the women folk are. Now that doesn't mean that you never go into the, the, the women's section, but there must be a necessity, an absolute need, and there are some etiquettes that you should follow when you're going to enter the sister's area. Why do you need to be more careful of going into the sister's area if sisters wear hijab and stay in their hijab whilst they're in their sections? Well, there could be mothers breastfeeding, there could also be niqabis who might come into the sister's area, they might take their niqab off just to pray or sometimes we just want to feel a little bit more comfortable. I wouldn't say that there is ever a time where sisters go completely without hijab being in their area, but they should have a sense of security being in their section knowing that a non-mahram is not going to walk upon them. So brothers, please think twice before you walk into the sister's area. If you must, if there's no other way of contacting, you know, the, the sisters or there's a particular sister you would need to talk to or something, there's a necessity, think about the etiquettes of entering into the, um, the areas of the women folk. I would suggest when you go into that area, if you must, do not enter into that area until you've said salam. Say salam and then wait. Ask the sisters, I would like to come in. Is it okay to come in? Then give them a little bit of time. Don't be such in a rush. Give them a bit of time. If there are sisters breastfeeding, they can get gather themselves together. There are niqabis there, they can gather themselves together. So on and so forth. If a woman looks at herself and she feels she's not absolutely 100% covered, she can adjust herself and then they can give you the permission and then you may come in. Again, for necessities. Not just, I feel like talking to that sister, I'm just going to walk into the sister's section and stand there and have a conversation with her for half an hour, okay? We all know free mixing is something we try to avoid anyway, but especially in the masjid. So please, brothers, respect us as your sisters. We are your sisters. Give us that respect of our space and follow the sunnah of the Prophet who is advising you guys to be aware of entering into areas where there are loads of us. And vice versa as well. Sisters, if you want to enter into the, the men's area, 
give them a warning as well just out of respect okay the next bad habit that I've noticed sometimes happens is whenever the adhan is called and people are getting ready to pray or the kama is called and we're about to get up start getting ready putting the lines together I've noticed that sometimes some people choose not to close the gaps so we're meant to put our feet together and close the gaps and sometimes I've noticed that some people avoid that now that can be due to a few things maybe they don't know that that's one of the sunnas or the etiquette of preparing for salah so we close the gap so that we do not leave any space for shaitan sometimes I think people avoid filling in the gaps because they are quite judgmental of the person that, that they're going to stand next to so maybe the sister standing next to you has got nail polish on her toes or maybe she's wearing some weave um or, or whatever you analyze her and she for whatever reason you don't want to stand next to her you avoid closing the gap that is not an excuse for anything the way someone else looks or appears in their salah isn't going to somehow destroy your own salah you follow the imam again we're talking about when whenever we are in the masjid and we're praying as a congregational prayer follow the imam and focus on your salah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it the reason why I bring that up is guys sometimes I am so tired of trying to close gaps I literally have to spread my legs this wide just so that my other leg can touch another sister's leg and she keeps moving her leg further and further away from me so it's just like sis can you not see that I'm trying to close the gap like work with me here there's only so far my legs can go <laughs> Subhanallah. There's only so far that my legs can go. Like, work with me here, sis. Please, let's close the gaps. Please, for the sake of Allah, let's try and close, um, close the gaps. Now, if there are some reasons why you can't close the gaps, because I know that the older sisters, some of them have um, medical issues and things like that, and they kind of need to lean against the wall um, because when they sit in 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 um, after sujood. They can't just sit on their own they need something to lean up against so they tend to stand more towards the wall I can understand that but either way the the, the etiquette of prayer is the etiquette of prayer please try your best for the sake of Allah to close the gaps let's close the path let's not allow shaitan come between us there's no need to be judgmental about other people if someone is in the masjid that is a step towards Allah and we should be proud of that person for that and I will speak more on that topic in a minute. So that is my second pet peeve, is leaving gaps and not closing gaps during Salah. Please work with your other sisters and let's keep the gaps closed. Okay, so this next one actually relates to the point I've made before in terms of keeping closing the gaps and keeping our feet together. This one tends to happen to be more so in Ramadan, guys. My toes is not shaitan. Yes, we're trying to close the gap, but can you please watch where you're stepping before you step? <laughs> because, guys, I'm not, it's not just me. I've actually spoken to a few other sisters who told me that this happens to them quite a lot. Some people are so eager to close the gaps, they just move their feet without thinking and then they stamp on your baby toe. My poor baby toe. <laughs> My poor baby toe is not happy about that. Please watch where you step before you step. It just takes a little bit of courtesy to look down and then put your feet gently close to the, the other sister's foot or gently close to the other brother's foot. There's no need to just boom like that, literally stepping on someone else's toe or stuff for Allah. We're in the masjid to praise Allah, to worship Allah and gain reward. We're not there to earn sins by hurting other people. Please, okay? It might not be intentional, but take it easy when you're trying to close the gap. There's, there's no need to be stamping on people's toe. Please stop stamping on people's toes, okay? I I've had enough. I know you're eager, but sis, bruv, calm down. It's not that deep. <laughs> it's not that deep. We will close the gap. You don't need to be stamping on my toe, please, okay? So let's just be mindful of not hurting one another <laughs> physically in the masjid. <laughs> oh, dear. The next one is actually not so funny, and this is something I've realised having visited um, other massages around, and that is that some masjids you go in and people are very welcoming and open and immediately they make you feel part of the community 
and some massages you go into it and people are very standoffish it's like people have already created their own cliques you know a clique is like you know a group of friends that just remain that way and it's like nobody's allowed to enter so when you visit as a new, either a new muslim or a new person or maybe this is your first time visiting the masjid you don't get a sense of feeling welcomed in that masjid and honestly this is it's not a good thing this is something for you and I to think about as just regular attendees of the masjids and it's also something for those who manage the mosques and why am I saying it's also a responsibility for those who manage the mosques those who manage the mosques are uh, should be there to encourage a positive and friendly um, environment within the masjid so that people don't feel pushed further and further away from the house of Allah so you know the imams and the wives of the imams and those who manage the masjid really should think about the culture within their masjid and should encourage you know people who attend regularly to be open and welcome towards other people like I said, some massages you go into and you do get that sense of, you know, you're new in there, you walk in, you say salam. If you're lucky, a few people might say salam back to you and then they're looking at you a bit strange. Nobody ever talks to you. You just kind of pray and you walk out and then you think, okay, maybe it's because it's my first time and then you go a couple more times and still nobody ever talks to you. Nobody approaches you, so on and so forth. It can be quite difficult when you are a new person going into a new environment to be the one to approach others. So it's easier for the people who normally attend that masjid if they make you feel more welcome, perhaps coming to say salam alaikum to you, you know, we haven't seen you here before, what's your name sister? Or oh, my name is X, Y and Z. Make them feel welcome, make them feel, feel, you know, at ease. You know, it really makes a difference because sometimes people are actually looking to come into Islam and the way other Muslims treat them can determine whether or not they decide to actually convert and become or, or revert back to Islam. So it is important for us to keep that very friendly environment in the masjid, for us not to be so close to, yeah, these are my groups of friends and that is it. If you see someone new who've just come into the masjid, they're not usually there, go ahead, you know, introduce yourself, tell them your name, ask for their names, you know, tell them a little bit about how things work around here, encourage them to come back again. If you see maybe they've finished praying salah, and they're leaving and say, Salam alaikum, sister, you know, try and come back again, inshallah. We hope to see you again soon, inshallah. Just be friendly and be open, okay? It says a lot about a masjid where everyone feels welcome, irregardless of their race, irregardless of their color, irregardless of what they look like, okay? Try and be more open to other people who come into that environment of the masjid. If it's their first time, or maybe they've been there for a while, they still don't have friends, try to make people feel welcome coming into the masjid it is the house of Allah it's not the house for us to be judgmental and be like well you know I don't know her so I'm not talking to her we are all Muslims we're brothers and sisters in the deen and there's nothing deeper than that so please for the sake of Allah make others feel welcome don't be so standoffish in the masjid it's not a place for attitude okay says the one who just gave you attitude <laughs> Uh, subhanallah. The next bad habit that I sometimes notice people do is when they haven't seen you in the masjid for a while and they give you sly or shady comments along the lines of, oh, you know, we haven't seen you here for a while. I wonder what brings you here. <sighs> Guys, just because people have not attended or someone hasn't attended a specific masjid in a while doesn't mean that they've lost faith. <laughs> okay? Doesn't mean that they are now out of the fold of Islam. Maybe they just haven't attended that specific masjid. Maybe you used to see them all the time and now you don't see them and perhaps there are reasons behind that. And even if you hear them say the reason behind it, I'll give myself as an example. When I was younger, I used to attend the masjid so much more, especially when I was a student, because apart from going to uni, what else do I have to do? I had a part-time job, yes, but after that, there wasn't any other greater responsibilities apart from that. So I would spend most of my time in the masjid. But after I finished uni and I started working full-time, I have a house to, to manage and keep up with. I have to cook, I have to do all of that. I'm no longer living with my parents who do everything for me anymore. I have less and less time because there's other things that take up 
the responsibility. That doesn't make me less of a Muslim because now I don't go to the masjid as often as I used to anymore because I find other ways to substitute my remembrance of Allah. So if you haven't seen someone in the masjid for a while, don't assume they're falling off the deen and, you know, be rude and give them sly comments. If anything, encourage them to attend more. You know, perhaps tell them, there's this event on this particular day. We'd really love to see you. We've really missed you around here, you know. We're doing this particular event. Can I take your number and send you um, the leaflets or WhatsApp information any time there are lectures or things like that happening? Just keep you updated with what's happening since you're, you, you don't have as much time to be here as often. And maybe in that way, you encourage them to attend more. But be kind and encourage them positively. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what battles they're handling. If they are able to attend the masjid, even if it's once in the month of Ramadan, let's not label them Ramadan Muslims. Let's just encourage them and be happy for them that at least they've taken a step forward to continue doing that act of good deed. So please guys, let's avoid the judgmental, sly comments that we give to people that we only see in the masjid once in a while. You might be in the masjid every single day, but perhaps that person that only attends once a week could be better than you. Allah knows and we know not. So let's encourage each other in a positive way towards good and not make other people feel bad by giving them shady comments. Next one is both for brothers as well as sisters. And that is not respecting the dress codes for attending the masjid. The masjid is the house of Allah. It is a sacred place of worship. If you travel around the Muslim world and you are a non-Muslim, you want to visit a masjid, you have to follow the code of dress before you enter into that masjid. Out of respect. So why is it that some of us still don't give respect to the way we dress when we are attending the masjid? Now again, we'll make up an excuse and say perhaps some people don't know. Maybe someone might be new to Islam. Maybe it's their first time visiting. Yes, we all have to keep that in mind when we see someone come into the masjid without following the dress codes and etiquettes of the masjid. However, it is very important to try and at least do some research before going to a mosque. That is whether you are a Muslim and you've not been practicing for a long time and you kind of lost all information about everything or you are someone thinking about coming into Islam or you are new to Islam, take a moment and research how you should dress going into the mosque. Why do I say this? Again, on numerous occasions, I have been seeing things in the masjid that I should not be seeing. My eyes should not be exposed to these things. The first example, brothers and sisters, I'm sure you guys have noticed if you live in the West, that nowadays there are TV screens that are placed on the sister's side so that we can not only hear the chutbah but we can also see it from the brother's side, right? Brothers, in case you haven't noticed, when you come into the masjid to pray, we can see you when you enter that hall as well, okay? So for those of you who have your trousers halfway down, when you're about to go into the masjid, make an effort to pull it up. Fully pull it up. Preferably put a belt so that nothing is exposed. Because sometimes when you come into the masjid, your trousers aren't fully up, brothers, and you don't have a belt or something to secure it in place, you come in to pray that two rakats for the sunnah of entering into the masjid, you bend down to make ruku, and like I said, we're seeing stuff we shouldn't be seeing. Please, for the sake of Allah. Think about these things before you come into a masjid. I know that not everyone wears a thobe. Ideally, you want to wear a thobe for the brothers when you're going to a masjid. It's just, it's clean, it's simple, it covers you, it's nice. I, you look on point when you wear a thobe, brothers. Please, okay? But I know that it's not for everyone. It's not everyone's style and that's okay. You're not forced to. It's just a sunnah and it's good too. If you follow it, Allah rewards you. If you're not able to, maybe you're coming from work, so on and so forth, at least make sure everything is in place and nothing is on show. A second example I have for the brothers was one time, I remember one specific summer, in my masjid, our masjid gets so full, despite the fact that it's quite a large masjid, it gets so full that they have to put up, a, they have a gazebo area 
where a section for brothers and a section for sisters where more people can stand to pray because the Juma prayers get so full especially in the summer when the kids are off and um, a brother walks in and he's got a vest top on and all of his uh, arms are out um, again I would assume someone that goes to that extent probably doesn't know the etiquette of, of how to dress coming into a masjid um, but again that's something sisters don't need to be exposed to we really don't need to be seeing that okay um, brothers keep your muscles for your wives only okay please um, <laughs> so things like that and it's not just brothers sisters as well but you know we always get attacked for our hijab the fact we're not wearing hijab properly blah 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 but no one seems to talk about the brothers and some of some of them i'm sorry some of them are not wearing proper hijab the way brothers should be wearing proper hijab either so i think it's about time we started calling the brothers out <laughs> but anyway no i'm just joking i just think it's about time you know we reminded one another of the right thing to do the last bad habit that i would like to draw to our attention as an ummah is not having a place or activities for women and the youth in the masjid I can't believe that I'm having to say something like this in 2020 when even in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there was an area for the women in the masjid however in some cultures it's, it's come to my attention in some cultures that they don't have prayer sections for women. I remember I used to um, I used to work with a lady who was okay. I'm not going to mention what country she's from, just because I don't I don't want the stereotype um, being applied. But she came from one of the the Arab countries, and you know I used to tell her that I would love to have had Fridays off because I, I love going to the masjid and I said to her you know I know it's not a mosque for Muslim women but it would be nice and she said well, you go to the mosque and I was like yeah and she said I thought women weren't allowed to go to the mosque imagine the shock on my face when I'm like what's this woman talking about because as far as I know even in Africa there's always been spaces for women in the masjid this woman sat me down and explained to me that yeah all her life like even her mom told her that that women don't go to the mosque there's no space for there's no place for women in the mosque she's meant to pray at home and do whatever at home and guys this is not the sunnah study the sunnah there should be places a space and activities for women in the masjid as, as well as for children too this is the house of allah women need to be educated they need to know the Dean the children also need to know the Dean they need to have a place in society gosh literally I feel like I should be filming this in, in the 50s women need to have a place in society they need to have their place in the masjid there are unique roles that only women can add to the community to the society as a whole and not having a place for women building a masjid and only having a men's section are we for real like please take this idea off of your head yes women do not have to it is not a must that we go to the mosque we can if we choose to and there are most of us who choose to who want to we want to attend the masjid we want to pray in congregation we want to we want to have the reward of praying in the salah in in congregation we want to have the reward of walking to the masjid we want to raise our children in that environment we want to be part of the classes and study the deen as well and gain that information so i think those services need to be available for women as well as the youth on top of that for the masjids who already have those services available for the women as well as the youth i think you need to increase in having female teachers teach the sisters so sisters i encourage you to study your dean to a point where you can teach other sisters okay i think it's very important for sisters to be teaching sisters not only does it reduce the chances of fitna happening but it also i think 
When an advice is coming from a woman to another woman, it hits different. Those of you who get me, you get me, you know? It hits different. It just, it goes in a different way than when it's a man giving you that same information. Because a woman is also speaking to a woman. They understand each other because they're coming from a similar place. That's not something that a man can do 100% of the time. Not that it can't be done. And I think we have lots of male role models, good teachers and scholars and so forth. But nowadays, we don't have enough female scholars, role models, teachers who can teach other sisters. So again, this advice is for those who manage the masjid. Try and find female teachers to teach other females as well. So that, brothers and sisters, brings the video to a close. Again, the masjid is an amazing place to be at. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you, if, if you attend a masjid, you're not going to experience any of this. But for that 0.1%, which is room for, for improvement, that is the reason why I'm making this video, so that you and I can just be a little bit more conscious and a little bit more aware once we are able to start attending the masjid again to try and improve some of these bad habits. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If there is anything I've missed out, some other habits that you've noticed that you want to bring to the attention of brothers and sisters, please leave it in the comment section down below. Be kind, be respectful. Um, we want to share this so that we, we um, improve, not just to share this to complain, okay? So bear that in mind. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Jazakallah here for watching. And inshallah, I will see you guys in Sunday's vlog. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.